Hey True Climbers, welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber. And welcome to all my new True Climbers. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and watching the videos. I truly appreciate the support. And to any of you who are new and don't know me, I go by Sai J or Sai. Either is fine to address me by. Anywho, with that being said, Let's not waste no more time. Come on in, have a seat, sink your feet in, and let's get it straight from the mud. It's time to dive deep within these true crime cases. So let's get right into it. Let's dive in. A murder mystery, the search for the person who mutilated a woman in Brooklyn. Police tell us what appears to be a leg was found wrapped up in Cypress Hills on Jamaica Avenue near Vermont Street. Tonight, a two-time convicted killer charged with murdering again. You know, this is a gruesome and barbaric homicide which resulted in a headless torso being disposed of on a New York City corner. And it takes a serial killer off our street. Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. 1.45 a.m. Police officers respond to a dispatch call directing them to arrive at the corner of 2641 Atlantic Avenue. Outside the little mom and pop shop, the Easy Pawn Court, in the East New York section of Brooklyn. Police were astonished by the gruesome discovery of what appeared to be a colorful flower bag placed inside a black trash bag, left inside of a shopping cart, was part of a dismembered woman's torso. The detectives closed off the area to begin the investigation of the murder scene where this unknown woman was discovered. Detectives grabbed hold of all surveillance footage captured in the nearby surrounding businesses within close distance of the murder scene. Upon analyzing all surveillance footage, it reveals what looks like to be a woman pushing a shopping cart with shopping bags inside. The alleged woman appears to be discarding these same shopping bags and cart right at the crime scene. Investigators also notice a distinctive colorful bag with flower designs printed on it within the footage. Soon detectives come into possession of more surveillance footage dated for February 27, 2022. The woman is witnessed entering a residence at 50 Pennsylvania Avenue with the same colorful flower bag and shopping cart, which will later be identified as the victim. At this point, Police realized the unique colorful bag in the shopping cart seen in the camera footage is an exact match to the one observed in the prior footage, which contained the woman's torso inside. The residence was just a few blocks away from the murder scene. On March 4th, the NYPD would obtain a warrant for an apartment located at 50 Pennsylvania Avenue, where this woman was suspected to have entered. 
once cops entered the apartment, they would encounter not exactly a woman, but an 83-year-old Harvey Marcellin, a man who was now going by Marceline Harvey, a trans woman. Once fully inside the apartment, I don't think the detectives were ready for what they would discover next. However, they would take 83-year-old Harvey into custody and charge him with the concealment of human remains. Detectives had stumbled upon a grisly mess inside the apartment, finding yet another part of the human remains. The details were pieced together and determined fairly quickly, being that detectives could clearly see who the victim was. Since they had discovered the decapitated head of the victim seen entering the residence on February 27th and found inside the trash bag on Atlantic Avenue shortly after. March 7th, 2022, just a little short of a week after the discovery of the woman's torso outside of the Easy Palm Court on Atlantic Avenue, police would then be dispatched out to Jamaica Avenue between Vermont Street and Jersey Ave. Once again, not far from the last location where human remains were found. This was just three blocks away from Atlantic Avenue. Police would arrive to another piece of the puzzle, a severed leg from kneecap down. The leg was found to be protruding out of a black garbage bag and tossed on the inside of a rubber tire. The dismembered leg was directly across the street from an auto repair shop and on the same block of a tire shop. So it was assumed the tire was previously already there before the leg wound up discarded inside. After the discovery of the leg, police will be presented with more disturbing footage. Marceline was caught on CCTV footage operating a motor wheelchair in the 99 cent store while sitting right on top of the trash bag that contained the dismembered leg discovered on Jamaica Ave. Law enforcement had not yet alerted the public or press about the capture of Marcel and Harvey. However, the press and civilians in the neighborhood seemed to already come up with their own speculation. Believing these discoveries were not an isolated incident and definitely were all connected. Thursday, March 10th, 2022, Marshall and Harvey would get indicted on second degree murder charges in connection to the dismemberment of the body parts found scattered throughout the streets of Brooklyn and inside the apartment. Through a highly anticipated press release held by the NYPD in charge of the case, the city would finally learn who the implicated suspect was taken into custody for this heinous, grisly crime. Once again, Marceline would be spotted on camera footage dating back to March 1st, 2022, making careless mistakes, tying her back to the March 3rd gruesome discovery. The proof was in the pudding. She had been witnessed again on surveillance footage accompanied by an unidentified woman purchasing garbage bags, a chainsaw, a hammer, and some cleaning supplies inside of a Manhattan home detail. March 2nd, 2022. Meanwhile, a friend by the name of Nezrin Anku had become worried of the whereabouts of a close friend, Susan Layden, who had for some reason skipped out on the earlier plans to meet up on February 28th. Nezrin recalled their last phone conversation before Susan had just stopped answering her and skipped their plans to meet up. Susan Layden allegedly suffered from high blood pressure, liver disease, and a previous fight against cancer, becoming a cancer survivor. She had also lived out most of her family. She had complained to her friend, Anku, that she was feeling 
terribly ill that day. She last spoke to her. So being aware of her friend's prior illnesses, she decided to call it in as a missing person and have law enforcement pay Susan a visit to do a quick wellness check. However, Susan was reported to have been gone at the time of the visit from the NYPD. March 3rd, 2022. Susan Layden's friend, Nezrin Aku, had every reason to worry for her friend's safety because unbeknownst to her, Susan's dismembered remains will be identified just one day after she reports her missing on March 3rd, 2022. Susan had become more than just a missing person. She had become the victim of an extremely sick, depraved and evil Marceline Harvey. Investigators identified the torso and human remains. Susan Layden was a 68 year old woman, the resident of a fairly new apartment complex built for LGBTQ plus senior community called Stonewall House located in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. Susan was observed entering the home on February 27th, which was the last of what anybody would see of her. Detectives had made a direct connection between the two, Susan and Harvey, through all the surveillance evidence left behind by Harvey. Marshall and Harvey showed up in various footages in possession of Susan's body stuffed inside a trash bag, along with the shopping cart and the distinctively colorful bag, though she would later claim her innocence in a hearing. Detectives released in their report, they believe Marceline Harvey and Susan Layden's relationship seemed to grow out of a social media connection. But let Harvey tell it, and she was saying they met at Tompkins Square Park in the East Village. Nezrin Anku, Susan's close friend, couldn't understand how she ended up in the hands of Marceline. She stated, in quote, I had no idea or knowledge about the relationship between Marceline and Susan. I have never even met this person. But I will say, Marceline didn't seem like the caliber of person Susan would associate with. She liked good things around her and good people. I'm just not sure what she was doing there, really, end quote. And Nezrin was in her right to feel the way she felt because what kind of human being could commit such a sociopathic, heartless, grim crime such as this crime, 83-year-old Marceline did and lived with it. To commit a crime of this statue, you would have to be a crazed maniac with sociopathic tendencies. One who wouldn't mind committing a crime that holds a lifelong penalty, who wouldn't mind committing murder or dismembering a body again, because they had already done such a thing before in the past, making it so much easier to repeat said crime. Harvey Marcellin or Marceline Harvey. So who exactly is Harvey Marceline or Marceline Harvey and her transgender character? And why has she done this to Susan Layden? Most importantly, how could she have been capable of committing a murder in her elderly years being an 83 year old man or woman? What would cause someone to flip so bad they commit a hideous act like this? Well, according to the press, she had unfortunately, but certainly earned her right to be rendered a new title in addition to her name. A title that would have the power to entice a blanket of fear over the whole entire community. A hat that many prior psychotic, sociopathic, narcissistic murderers had gladly worn before, serial killer. 
The facts would soon come to surface that Harvey was no stranger to law enforcement, prison, or the criminal lifestyle at all. Harvey was extremely depraved. In fact, Harvey Marcellin would spend more than half of his entire 83 years alive on this earth, locked away inside of a prison cell. Harvey spent more time inside than outside, out on the street, spending a total of 53 years behind prison bars. She would spend 20 years the first prison stay sentence and then 33 years the second go round. April 13, 1963. On the 13th day of April, April of 63, for a homicide of Harlem, where a shot and killed a female, for this offense, the sentence of 20 years to life. Marcellin, 25, heads to his apartment at 2216 8th Avenue of Manhattan, toting a 32 caliber revolver. He proceeds to head up to the door of his apartment when he catches his living girlfriend, Jacqueline Bond, in the hallway of the Harlem apartment building they share. He shoots at her without delay in that moment. Jacqueline tries to flee while in fear of her life, but she runs into their bedroom inside the apartment with Marcellin chasing right behind. Marcellin catches up and shoots Jacqueline again landing a fatal shot that would take her life. She then stumbles into the living room and drops in the middle of the floor where her body was found. April 5th, 1963. Jacqueline Bond had turned informant. Authorities would soon realize she was subpoenaed to appear in court for alleged crimes Harvey Marcellin had committed during the time of their relationship. Authorities soon realized Jacqueline was absent once she was absent from the courtroom. Before Jacqueline was gunned down, she had decided that her and Marcellin's time together was over. She would break it off with Marcellin shortly before her murder. While in the presence of her mother, Jacqueline would tell Marcellin that she no longer wanted a romantic relationship with him, and it was over. Jacqueline's mother recounted Harvey's last words to her daughter before her murder being intensely delivered from a place of a deep-seated anger, which Harvey screamed at her while pointing his finger and replying with, I'll get you. I'll get you.